Their family was made complete with the arrival of their daughters, Karis and Kariah Dunn. They had God, their love, and their babies. So they had several challenges being married young and having their first child so early in their marriage they were a team. They conquered their challenges together. After 13 years of marriage and difficulties becoming insurmountable, infidelity was committed and the family crumbled under the weight of its obstacles. Pierre and Krista were divorced and what once became a romantic story about young love became a nightmare. This nightmare was played out in front of their community, their church, and most importantly, their families. Broken themselves, they fought to hold their children together and navigate this new normal the best way they knew how. They had to remain connected for the sake of the girls, but it wasn't easy. They began seeking God together as parents, and that's when God began to heal their relationship. In time, they learned to co-parent effectively as a team without any chance of reconciliation in their minds. On April 8, 2018, after being divorced for nearly six years, everything changed. The stage of their heartbreak paled in comparison to the grand stage God would use for their healing and testimony. Pierre was asked to testify at Turning Point Family Worship Center, the church they attend. As he began to explain how God has healed and delivered him, even Pierre himself was surprised at what happened next. God instantly gave him the authority to take back his family, his wife included. Crystal had no idea that while the father of her children was testifying, God was performing open heart surgery on her and her daughters. The congregation sat many weeping as they saw the love of God and repentance and healing perfectly demonstrated in Pierre's example. God completed the work immediately in the family, giving Crystal back the ability to love Pierre beyond being her brother in Christ and the father of her children. After Karis and Kariah, God gave them the ability to fully forgive their parents and happily watch God do something they never thought he would. Pierre then called Crystal up in front of the church and got on one knee and asked her if she would take him back as her husband. Healing flowed through Pierre, Crystal, the girls, the congregation. It continues to flow from the testimony of this family to this day. On June 2, 2018, the work that God had done was solidified as they once became Mr. and Mrs. Dunn. Better together is not just a title. It is a statement of truth founded in God's word that when God has joined two people, they are better together. Better Together is a personal ministry of the Dunn family with the idea of appreciation over expectation ingrained as a core value. The goal of Better Together is to promote that with God's help, you can forgive what you can't forget and to showcase that God really can do anything. Welcome, welcome to the table, Crystal and Pierre Dunn. How we doing? Hello, everybody. Awesome. You all have a powerful testimony, a powerful bio. Thank you. God is so good. I was smiling while you was reading it. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So tell us more about you all. Tell us more about yourselves and, you know, uh, whatever you else you would like to share with our amazing listeners that we haven't read about. Oh, wow. Well, um. We've been married a year since the mm-hmm. since the proposal, um, mm-hmm. and April the eighth mm-hmm. of two thousand eighteen. Actually, today is our first when we were married before anniversary. Yeah. We got married September second of two thousand, the first time mm-hmm. around. But today is that anniversary. We've been doing <laughs> a little celebrations. Uh, you know, went up and had breakfast together this morning to celebrate nice. September second. So we got a lot. We have a lot of anniversaries to <laughs> celebrate. Yeah, more, yes. more. That's the benefit now. Is that we have a lot more to celebrate the, the second time mm-hmm. around. God has blessed us. Amazing, amazing. So happy anniversary, first of all. Happy anniversary. <laughs> Thank you. You are welcome. So basically what I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to ask you some questions, Chris. I'm going to, I want to make sure everybody gets a chance to, like, talk. And if you all want to answer the uh, questions together, you can do that as well. So, Crystal, okay. please tell us more about your process to healing. Um, it's an ongoing process. I think one of the things that I try to express about April the 8th is that when I had no idea that that was going to happen on that day, um, 
And, oh, man, I, I know on April the 8th while Pierre was testifying, God was performing open heart surgery. Um, and it's amazing because by the time Pierre got through testifying, I felt like God said, okay, that's enough. You can move forward now. Um, because I had forgiven Pierre, but I didn't have to remarry Pierre. And I didn't know that we would get remarried. And so the healing process is just that. It's a process. Um, I've watched God heal triggers, heal um, painful memories that I know you're talking about us and what we went through, but mm -hmm. it just doesn't hurt like it used to. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm so, what are some steps that you took to? I know God is definitely the center of that, but what are some steps that you took to deal with that? You know. Um. Definitely. Uh, if I could call God a step, I would say God was the step. Mm -hmm. Um. Also, surrounding ourselves and myself with supportive friends, a supporting cast. You know, mm -hmm. our uh, pastors are very supportive and involved as well as our close friends. Mm -hmm. And and that's always a great thing to have that support system, right, and the people that are speaking life, right, because sometimes when you're going through storms and different things, you have to make sure you're talking to the right people. So that's so important. Absolutely. I think sometimes for um, women or people of faith, we tend to get looked at as if we don't need that support or that comfort, and that's just not true. So definitely having a supporting cast, a praying supporting cast, and a um, and being patient, you know. The difference between me and Pierre, I think, when others get married is we knew what we were getting. You know, he knows I'm not a morning mm -hmm. person. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you know, we know each other's habits um, because we were married before and because we did live. So we signed up for all of that again as well, and it's just been a process of, patience and loving each other. Awesome, awesome, awesome. For, for our listeners that are listening, that's so important that you know what you're walking into as well. So I love that. Um, Pierre, what would the Pierre of today tell the Pierre of back then? Oh, well, oh, man, I don't think we've got enough time <laughs> for me to talk to, to that guy. <laughs> uh, I would I would tell him a whole lot. I think uh, – but concerning marriage, um, to Crystal's mm -hmm. point, she said some things about triggers. I think that um, <clears throat> that every husband uh, should respect that um, and 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 help and aid as much as possible. Because as whatever your spouse is going through, you guys are going through that together. This is not a time to be selfish. You can be as selfish as you want when you're single, but when you ask someone to spend their life with you, you need to learn to appreciate that and respect that, that you're sharing uh, each other's lives and they're sharing their life with you. Mm -hmm. So I would definitely tell that young Pierre, immature Pierre, mm -hmm. That this is someone that's decided to share their life with you. You respect not only their strength, but you also aid their weaknesses and, and vice versa. I love that because that's so important, right? Especially for people that are listening that are, that are aspiring to get married. You want to make sure, like you stated, that you know you're not selfish because you can't be selfish and be married, right? You can't. No, it don't matter. It's not gonna work. <laughs> It's not going to work. Stay single if you want to be selfish. Right. Stay single if you want to be selfish. Right, right. So, do so, Pia, do you love her even more now, you know, since, you know, uh, you all went through some different storms? Well, I never stopped loving her, so let that mm -hmm. stay on the, be on the record that, <laughs> mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. um, um, uh, more, man, I, I don't know. I, I, I wouldn't say more. I, I, I I show it more, you mm -hmm. know, I probably mm -hmm. love her just as much then as I love her now. And um, if if we're talking about love versus making bad decisions, um, you know, and, and I know it could be cliche for a man to say that, you know, he can still love someone and make bad decisions. But 
I would say that I respect our vows more. Mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. know, I love her the same, but I respect um, um, a woman. A woman's love is it, it. It works a lot different than a man's, and and I respect you know the way she loves me more. So, I love um, and and that's and that's the difference now. I have more understanding, actually, and so that's mm-hmm. that makes a world of difference to speaking to the young Pierre versus this Pierre. That some things uh I is I have a lot more self respect. I respect our relationship. I respect her being in my life more. And I don't take those things for granted. Amazing, amazing. And I know in just reading your bio, um, you know, when you were talking about you when you was getting ready to propose to her again and I know God was dealing with you, right? And I love that part about it. So what made you ask her to do it all over again? Because I know God right. was working I, with you. Yeah. Yeah. I, you just said it, you know. <laughs> he said it. That was it because I did not plan to do that at all. <laughs> I wanted to go into my pastor's office and have something really discreet um, <laughs> with a lot of discretion <laughs> between me and her. Yeah. And, and our pastor, but that's not what the Lord told me to do. And if I never heard him before, I heard him then. And uh, if I never obeyed him before, I obeyed him then. So uh, I did it the, the, the Lord's way. And uh, since then, God's been blessing. Um, mm-hmm. You know, our our pastor says if you, you know, put God first, he, he will take care of your business. And the Lord has done that in our lives. And and that's true, and that's true. So for so for the listener that's listening, Pierre, and for the guy that's listening, who you know might be in the same situation, but they don't know really how to go back and do that, you know. So what steps did you take to, you know, uh, get the, you know, the? I know God was definitely part of a big part of it, but what are some steps that you took when you were dealing with this? Oh, the steps to the take to do what part? I I just. So I can have clear. Yeah, the steps that you took to go back and propose to your to your wife, right? What steps did you take? Because for that man that's listening, because sometimes when people do a divorce, it's over, right? They don't, and then sometimes they might want to get back together. That guy, right? Because sometimes the guys don't know how to come back and do that, right? And they'll yeah. just deal with it. So, what would you tell that guy who is who who might be thinking about going back to do that? You know, to go back and propose yeah. to your wife and say, you know, let's try this again. Yeah. Well. um, Oh man, I don't know how much time we have. <laughs> I, I will have to put that in a book. <laughs> uh, I don't know. In short, um, I would definitely would say, I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm a man of faith, and uh, mm-hmm. if, if we do, if we believe um, in, in the scriptures or believe in God, and the, and, and that's what it's a, it's a lot of guys in there that makes a lot of mistakes, right? So, yeah. uh, but. But uh, the Bible talks about a righteous man that falls seven times, and um, mm-hmm. but he's righteous not because if he fell, he's righteous because he got he picked he got himself back up. And so mm-hmm. I would say, yeah, first uh, things first for me, Ashley, I had to take care of myself. Mm-hmm. I had to do mm-hmm. do right again. I as I mentioned before, you have to come get to a self respect about it, and uh, it started with on my knees asking God for uh, putting him first on how he wanted my life to go. And one of the things uh, I asked God for was for a wife. It didn't specifically have to be Crystal. He mm-hmm. showed me. He showed me it was mm-hmm. going to be her. And um, that's what I would start. If any man, you know, it, takes, it took some humility for me, a lot, a whole mm-hmm. lot. And uh, you swallow your pride, uh, but that's not a sign of weakness. That's that's a strength when you learn to put God first and say, not what I want necessarily, God, but I'm telling you what I want, and I need you to help me make the right decision. And and that's what he did. He helped me make the right decision. He helped me pick the right woman. And if you if he is in a divorce or a man and he wants his family back or he wants his wife, he needs to ask God for the right time 
Because remember, I didn't know that God was going to lead me to do that at that specific moment. I had mm-hmm. my own way of thinking how this was going to go down, but mm-hmm. it didn't go down my way. And and that's what every man needs to know, that even if you have a plan, you need to put that plan in God's hands and ask him how to do it, you know, and then God will give you a plan. And then because the timing got to be right, even if he, he, mm-hmm. he gets the, the courage to, to go, yeah, let's do it again. If she's not in the right place, Mm-hmm. And he might, you know, he it might not be. He got to give her time. And Crystal tells me all the time she's at that moment. <laughs> her heart wasn't at the right place until she seen me, you know, up there. And she said that's when her heart began to turn. But before then, she she probably wasn't in that place. And um, yeah, he needs to. Uh, have the it's not even what it's not what you say it's what you say when you say it how you say it all that all those play a part together so that's what I would say he needs to definitely be seeking for some direction so for our men that are listening that might be going through you know different situations and just like this you know it takes that humility and putting God first like you said and knowing that it's in God's time right and that's with anything in life it is in his time because sometimes we want it our way when we want it and it don't work out, right? And he'll get our attention until he gets it think, his way. Mm-hmm. If I could, if I could add into that, I think mm-hmm. from a natural standpoint, um, Pierre and I were in two different places as far as I think our healing process because the Lord never showed me that we were getting back together. Um, mm-hmm. So my process over the during the course of that time was to move forward. And that process looked like, you know, I I had to spend more time with my girls, getting to know them in a way that I didn't know them because some were doing, doing all of the challenges that Pierre and I went through. You know, we had a disconnect. Um, mm-hmm. So that process looked like, all right, this is our new normal. This is how we're going to move forward. And it involved more family time than ever. Um, You know, I remember taking my girls to the park to do their homework and just talk to them to get them out of our home, out of places that may, you know, represent some type of pain or just whatever was going on at home. But it was reconnecting. You know, when you ask for the steps, it's kind of hard to identify them because, again, while you're going through, I didn't have a a 12-step process. You know, I didn't have a a manual that said do this and then do that. Mm -hmm. It was day by day, sometimes hour by hour and other times minute by minute. Um, You know, when you don't, when you get married, you don't have a plan B. We didn't. You know, I didn't have a plan B. This was supposed to be for the rest of my life. And Mm -hmm. when that world was turned upside down, you go into survival mode. Um, Mm -hmm. So it's hard sometimes to list the steps, but I I do recall the process. And so we all know, right, it takes two people for anything, right? When things don't go right, it takes two people, everybody has a part. So, Crystal, what part did you play in the divorce? Oh, man. Um, One of the things that I I tried to do, I do try to do a lot of things differently, but if I could, Mm -hmm. I was a foolish wife. Um, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in a lot of ways, you know, I I think men love differently than we do, um, Mm -hmm. and they interpret respect different, differently than we do. Um, you know, I wasn't the best housekeeper. I wasn't the best cook. Um, just things that I did to feed into, um, you know, I'll, I'll never say that I was the cause of infidelity. I don't. I don't feel like that's the case. That's not mm-hmm. the case. But I could have definitely operated with more wisdom. You know, I mm-hmm. wish that mm-hmm. when I seen things turning or I seen things changing, that I wouldn't have joined in the attack against Pierre. You know, at twenty and twenty one, mm-hmm. with a daughter, you know, we went through job losses, and in Instead of being there and being supportive, I was that one that would say, well, why? What happened today? Why you lose this job? You know, I didn't create a safe place. Um, 
to combat what a, a black male is already going through before he even comes home and when he walks out that door. You know, I, I would mm-hmm. say I didn't create that safe place for him to come home and, you know, escape mm-hmm. the madness outside of our door. Okay. And for the woman that's – so what, what is some advice you would give for that woman that's listening, that's aspiring to get married, or for that woman that's married now? and, you know, might be having some, you know, struggles in her marriage and wanting to keep it together. What is some advice you would give to those women? Yeah, my first advice would be to eliminate those who are not in that house. You know, Mm -hmm. a lot of times you have different types of support. You have those that say, I wouldn't take what you take in, and then you have those that were like, just keep praying and hold on. I would secure that relationship you know sometimes we tend to talk to others before we talk to our spouse no Mm -hmm. talk to him talk to her this is your partner for life this is your this is the husband or this is the woman that you marry for the rest of your life you know sometimes we we lose because we don't communicate um and i would say Mm -hmm. communicate and not at a time where everything is on a 10 and you're already upset and ain't nobody really listening, you're just going back and forth. But, you know, search and seek for those times when it is calm and say, hey, you know, somewhere along the line we have had a disconnect and I don't want to keep it that way. You know, everybody's story is different mm-hmm. and everybody's experience is different. Um, so, of course, that answer would be different depending on the the um, person's you know, current experience, but what I would say, it's not just about a husband and um, a husband and wife. It's not just about marriage, but in any relationship that you want to repair, that you want to maintain, that you want to grow, you've got to put work into it. Marriage mm-hmm. is work, um, mm-hmm. and part of that work is communicating when you don't want to communicate, listening when you don't necessarily feel like listening, but Love will make you go that extra way, that extra mile. I love that. I love that. And I know you've shared with us, you know, what you're doing in the spiritual, you know, uh, this mm-hmm. time around. But what things are you doing in the natural that you're doing different this time around? That would be that where that appreciation and that expectation comes into mm-hmm. play. You know, I expect Pierre mm-hmm. to do certain things, but did I show him appreciation for doing that? Um, And that's a little big with me. And, for example, yes, I expect him to go to work and pay the Mm -hmm. bills and all of that type of stuff, but do I ever tell him thank you? You know? Mm -hmm. Um, Did I let him know? I know you don't have to do this, but you're doing it because you love us and because you uh, Mm -hmm. provide. And we spend more time dating each other. You know, we spend more time... I mean, life is hard enough. So when we find a moment to play, when we find a moment to just enjoy each other's company, that's what we do. You know, sometimes you got to tell life and the pressures, time out, you you don't get to come in this zone right now. This is a stress-free zone where we're just going to enjoy each other um, and spend more time focusing on me and him and not outside projects. You have to make time for each other. You have to, you know, you have to find what makes, what does he enjoy? You know, he's into this, mm-hmm. his beard game. So I found some stuff that I could <laughs> order for his beard because I know that's yeah. something that he's into. You mm-hmm. know, you have to uh, investigate each other a bit more and not go off of assumption, but this is my friend. I do want to spend the rest of my life with him, and we don't want to do that miserably. So, Let's find out what makes each other tick, you know. What do you enjoy doing or what? And, again, it goes back to asking him, what What do you like? What makes you happy? And that's not something that the younger Crystal did. Well, I just, I, I'm just loving it because it's so important, those words and appreciation, expectation, and still dating, right? I hear a lot of married people talk about that and how that, you know, um, works with their marriage and how it keeps them, you know, the excitement going. So thank you for sharing that with our listeners. But I can't forget Pierre. I cannot forget you, Pierre. <laughs> <laughs> so I know what you're doing in the spiritual, but what are you doing different in the natural? Uh, well, um, I guess, what, as she said, we hang out. I mean, you know, I, uh, I like 
hanging out. We call it Saturday Day Date, where we 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 start off with some breakfast and just me and her. And um, if she has the day off, she she comes and uh, goes to work with me. And, and uh, I own a small business, so I can make you know my schedule to fit around spending time with each other. So I I try to do that. I mean, we took, I don't know, our first vacation, just us for the first time. Yeah, we went on a cruise. So a lot of it is that people lose that discovery part to each other, you know, Mm -hmm. and and that, you know, once you, for a guy, I, I dare to say that once you figure, you know, figure them out, then you no longer it's no longer a puzzle or it's no longer <laughs> intriguing but but you you have to um understand that each and every one of you are, are individuals that evolve you know you you're constantly mm-hmm. growing and she wants to go back to school and i i the things that she's interested in I don't you know downplay it all i I'm all for it. And those are the things that keeps – that's exciting for me mm-hmm. to be with a woman that wants to, you know, mm-hmm. even get better, you know. She's been in accounting for 20 years, and that's impressive. But she's talking about, you know, running a business herself and that, that type of stuff, you know, with that newness of it. So to keep it fresh in the natural, you know, you definitely support each other at – as you guys involve, as you grow and as you get older, you know, be that support group for be that first responder, mm-hmm. you know, to each other when it comes to um, just them wanting to invest in something that they want to do. You got to be that, that biggest cheerleader and that'll keep it fresh, you know. And I love this for our listeners that are listening, keep it fresh, be supportive. And Pierre, I, I know you said, you know, you, you know, sometimes men think they feel, you know, they already don't put the puzzle together, so it might, you know, you know, it could get boring, but you just got to keep it fresh. So what's your favorite thing about her now? Oh, well, I, <laughs> now, I mean, I, so I, I think, I think those things that I appreciate now is that we have the time to do the things that we want to do. Right, because we were raising, you know, today we took, well, we 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 sent our daughter back to, uh, Purdue Fort Wayne, and she we sent her back with her grandparents. But you know, 20 years ago or 18 years ago, we were raising, raising her. So we spent the last 18 years raising our firstborn, and now we are in a stage in our life where. I get to see her do some things she wants to do, and and I like that. I mean, I, and that's you know, if I I started my business a few years back and I I was able to 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 do things I want to do, so I definitely am enjoying her getting to a place to now she's talking about some things she wants to do because that's what time it is. You know, she helps raise our daughters, our, our youngest daughter is 15 years old, and uh, she's a uh, sophomore in high school. And so we're we're entering to that stage to where uh, I get to see us invest time in ourselves again. So I, I like that. And, and that's what and that's what I like about her. She is really going after some things she likes. I enjoy those things. I enjoy seeing her doing some things she wants to do. Um, so, yeah, that's what I, I like about it. And that's what it's all about, supporting each other, right? Yeah. Supporting each other. So I, I, I really want to ask this question to both of you all. And, you know, if you both want to answer, you can. But what did you mean in your bio when you said, God can help you forgive what you can't forget? Oh, man. You know, again, if I go back to saying when you, somebody gets married for the first time, you don't really know what you're dealing with. Most of the time, there's not something that you are having to forgive and move on from. Where our case is just the opposite. You know, um, getting remarried again, yes, it came with love, it came with excitement, but the reality is 
you know, infidelity did play a part in our divorce um, previously. And so the forgiving, which you can't forget, I, I may never forget what happened in our previous marriage, but being able to love and forgive anyway is the God factor, you know. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. When you uh, were creating new memories and we're creating new moments and not just stuck in the negative things that happened in our past. Um, and that's a real place to be before we got um, remarried and over the course of those years of being divorced and separated, those were very difficult and painful years. You have to understand that we both moved on. Um, if maybe not at the same time, but over those course of the years, he dated other people, I dated other people, we were done, <laughs> being done, so to speak. Um, mm -hmm. And so to come back full circle and be in love again, knowing we've got this this uh, uh, dark past, so to speak, and now you're moving forward, that's, that's the a meaning of being able to forgive what you can't forget. And forgiveness mm -hmm. means he's not coming home every day looking in my eyes having to relive whatever happened right. or went wrong. Right. Real forgiveness. Right. I think sometimes as women, particularly women who are professionals or who work during the day or who have other projects or obligations through church, sometimes we lose the family aspect. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes we get lost in the day to day, um, and we bring stuff home with us too. And, you know, this second time around, part of the step or the process is being slow down. Home comes first, you know, um, and that may not mean every day I'm batting 100 with that, but that's my motivation. My home comes first. He comes first. You know, if he's not happy, that affects the rest of my day. And I think that's one of the things that changed. You know, it was lonely sleeping by yourself after being married for 12 years. And during mm -hmm. those lonely moments, you have a lot of time to think, how did I get here? And if I ever get to get married again, how, what am I going to do not to end up in this situation? So one of those steps would be to to go through the planning process because divorce took two people, you know. Um, that meant somebody, both of us wasn't happy. And our response mm -hmm. to not being happy may not have been the same thing, but you got to realize you got to do your part. And I mm -hmm. think as an individual and as a wife, that's my focus. You know, God, help Crystal be the best wife that she can be to Pierre, and that has to be a priority. You know, one of the things we talked about is our Saturday dates. You know, when you live busy lives, you have to, I don't care if you got to put it on the calendar and say this is not getting get rescheduled, we're going to make time for each other, and that's just what you got to do. Mhm. Mm I love that. I love that because you know I want to say before we because I have a couple more a, a couple one or two more questions for you all. But you all were highly recommended by your publicist Jessica Mosley. She <laughs> said that your story was going to heal all the hear it. And right now this is a powerful story. Okay. I just want to say that. <laughs> I I just want to say that. And my next question is, when is the book coming out? <laughs> Oh wow! Uh, you trying to get us in trouble? It's coming. You know, Jessica. <laughs> it's no, coming. no, no. This, this is gonna be a good book. Okay, I love yeah. it. Yeah, I. Have, we work on it. You know, uh, daily. We gotta. We gotta first a few sentences <laughs> done. Don't say that. Just don't get mad at. I, I think it's. I think what we want people to know is that during this process, we never saw a, a interview. We never saw telling somebody about our story, let alone a book. So it's kind of been, wow, this really happened. Okay, if we're mm -hmm. going to share this with somebody else, how do we do that? What do we share? You know, when do we right. share? Because even though this happened pretty fast, we're still walking this process out. Yeah, you know, I mean, still, for me, you know, I'm not, I'm not much of a, a talker, uh, but um, I know that, you know, God has a purpose um, for our testimony. So um, to Crystal's point, sometimes you just don't know what would 
what to share, you know, do you share it all? You want to, you want to, you want to share the part that helps. So people want to know what happened, you know, but when did the infidelity happen and all those details and those are important details. But I think even bigger than that is people need to know that you can recover from catastrophic events in your life. You know, Mm -hmm. I wish we had not gotten a divorce ever, but at the same time, I don't, apologize for what I learned about myself, what I learned about my children, what I learned about valuing marriage while I was divorced. Right, and and I would say, especially for guys, I tell you something that's dear if if he's a good man and helping him go through divorce is that uh, not being able to foresee uh, the effect that it has on your children. Um, And I I didn't didn't want to leave the show without saying that uh just consider that cuz they they're they're worth, they're worth fighting for they are a part of the equation um they are definitely a part they 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 in a whole another another different realm on how marriage sees it a whole lot different so uh just consider consider that before. and he didn't want nobody else to raise his kids <laughs> no, no, and, I and that I and I yeah I yeah, I, I I took that part very seriously, and mm-hmm. um, so and, and again, it, it it does if if there if there are men out there, I do one way to get to a man heart is his children. Mm-hmm. If he's a if he's halfway decent, if he's a halfway decent guy, he 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 will consider his children and how his decisions in life. Period. Mhm. Mm-hmm. Consider you know. It, consider his children. I agree. I love that. I just love how you all are, you know, together and just, you know, being vulnerable and sharing your story, but also sharing how we can get out of it, right? Like you, we went through a storm, but that didn't have to be the end. So I love that. And I just love that you're being transparent. You're able to help other people. So, what products are you all currently working on to help struggling marriages? Are y'all working on any type of products that you're getting ready to uh, launch out? Well, actually, I really don't know how to do what you're saying. <laughs> 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 I, 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 I didn't know that that stuff is tied. I couldn't tie the two together. I mean, outside of uh, us going out and having, uh, well, people inviting us to, like, conferences and speaking at different places and, and vineyards, I really don't know, you know, that's what we need Jessica for. She's awesome. She goes, yes. So, yes, Jessica gonna, is going to make sure this story is yeah. heard all over the world, the nation, in the States, out the States. She is an amazing publicist, honestly. She's yeah. an amazing publicist. She's an amazing person. I know. Yes. yes. I One of the, there's a few things that we're working on. Of course, we're working on the book. Um, like Sierra said, we do we mm-hmm. have um, spoke at conferences, a couple of conferences, and um, locally we have a lot of, um, I know I get a lot of women that inbox me or they'll call me and say they got my number from so-and-so or they'll say I read um, your article and I just have questions. So we kind of pride in that one-on-one time um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. of being there for other couples or other people that are getting married. I think we had somebody ask us if we do marriage counseling. Um, So this is a new world for us. Again, you have to remember that 20 months ago, this wasn't even a conversation. So Mm -hmm. to be in communications with uh, Miss CEO and the things that she does and that she's helping us through, this is all new to us. So we are very Mm -hmm. green in this area, but we are very passionate and sincere that if we can help one or a thousand, Mm -hmm. you know, just by sharing our story and just by being transparent and say, hey, we went through some of the worst stuff that you can go through, but we have recovered with God's help, then, you know, we're willing to communicate that. However, um, you know, we do have our own uh, Better Together T-shirts now um, that nice. we're wearing nice. and promoting. Nice. And uh, so there's some different things going on out there that um, we will definitely keep you in the loop and, uh, connected with those projects that we're working on. 
Well, I just want to commend you all for sharing your amazing story, and I know it has helped some people, and, and for our listeners that are listening, it has helped some people, okay? And I look forward to seeing all the great things that you all are going to do, and I know you have an amazing publicist who has that definitely does the work and is going to take you all and make sure that your story gets heard. So um, I'm looking forward to all the great things that you all have in store because it's going to be powerful. So if you would please tell our listeners how we can follow and support you on all social media platforms. So we um, we are on Instagram, and it's uh, bettertogether.us. We are also on Facebook, um, Better Together is how we have tagged everything. Uh, we have a website that is www.love, the number two, again.com. And on that website, it lists the the proposal. It also has our actual wedding that day, and it has other things that are coming up that we're working on, um, as well as a link to our YouTube page. So we are building all of those, and we are doing it with excitement. Well, please, listeners, follow and support this amazing couple. They're doing some great things, and I'm excited to see all the great things that they're going to do to finish this year strong and in the future. So definitely support them. I want to thank you, Chris and Pierre, for coming to the table today to share your powerful story. It has been amazing, and I can't wait to invite you all back to the table. Thank you, Ashley, so much. We appreciate you for the opportunity and the opportunity to share our story and our testimony with others. Thank you so much. We appreciate your time. Yes, thank you both. Thank you. So I would like to give a special thanks to Jessica Mosley. I would also like to give a special thanks to Tammy Collins Marquis and John Schamberger and author Kimberly McLemore. And I, you all can follow me on Facebook at Ashley Little and on Instagram at underscore Ashley A. Little. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Creating Your Seat at the Table, where Ashley speaks with corporate professionals, celebrities, entrepreneurs, authors, and speakers who are transitioning or have transitioned to entrepreneurship. 